Hello friends, it's Cindy Brumbaugh from CindyLeeBeeDesigns.com, independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I have a pretty little Easter card for you. It's called a trophy card because it pops up in the middle with something that's displayed on the top with a pedestal on the bottom. Super simple. You're going to pick a stamp set that has an image that you don't have to embellish a lot because it does slide in through a slit in the card when you make it. So I thought that the Fable Friends was a perfect stamp set because normally with this one you're just stamping a nice clean image and doing some water coloring or blender penning or stamp and blend coloring. So I'm going to show you how to get started on this. Now I use some great products in the occasions catalog and the annual catalog. This beautiful whisper white tool ribbon. So pretty, so Eastery, babyish, very delicate, feminine. And we're also using the Gingham Gala paper, and we're using one of the new in colors, Grapefruit Grove, and our rectangle stitched framelits and a couple framelits from the petals and more framelit set. So let's get started here. And remember, I always have all the materials and all of the products and the tools I use on my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com. You would just go to the search bar on the right side under my photo and you'll find a place to pop in for instance, for this card, you would put Fable Friends and then up will pop this card and you can go right to it and you can find all the products and colors I used. And you can use the YouTube video and make sure you subscribe to my channel because you will get notified um, when I post a video. So to get started, we're going to be using our scoring tool and we're going to start out making our pedestal here the card base and it's going to wrap around and make a card base here. So I'm going to show you how my friend Linda Heller had modified some measurements from maybe a different trophy card that you've maybe seen on another, you know, blog site or maybe on a, uh, you know, split coast stampers or something. And it used a four and a quarter by 11, but she cut it down to 10 and it really works that well because all you have to remember is one and a quarter. So I just took this and had it at 10 inches by four and a quarter, and I'm gonna score it every one and a quarter inches. So that gives me one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and a quarter, seven and a half, and eight and three quarters. And now you've got equal one and a quarter sections there. Now we're gonna put back our scoring tool so we can finish off here. Now, now since we have a 10 inch piece of paper, we're gonna want to look at the halfway mark, which is five inches. And we're going to get our Stampin' Trimmer, which is over a little out of my reach and we are going to be using it to cut a slit right here at the five inch mark here. Now the best way that I found to do this, just so that I didn't mess up, is I wanted to go in about a little more than a half inch because the panel that slides in and out of this slot is two and three quarters by five and a half. So this piece of Grapefruit Grove here that slides is two and three quarters. So whenever I was figuring out what I needed it, I wanted it a little bigger than two and three quarters. So just backtracking my math, I came to going in five eighths from each side. So we're going to take our trimmer and what I did for demonstration purposes and also just to help me out is I put some painter's tape on there and I put my left side of my cardstock at the five inch mark that's halfway that means that my scored five inch mark is right in the cutting and scoring groove of my stamp and trimmer and then I just make sure that I keep it in place there and then I keep my finger up here so that I don't cut into the paper when I'm moving this cutting blade which is a dark blade and the scoring blade is the lighter blade so right at five eighths that's little two little tick marks off of the half inch so if you put it right there and then you let it drop and then i'm going to be cutting from the top of the blue down to the top of this blue and this blue is at three and five eighths so if you measure from the top you're going to measure down to three and five eighths that is five eighths up from four and a quarter at the bottom so just remember start at five eighths and cut down to three and five eighths. So now I can see that my little pointer is at five eighths and I'm going to cut down 
to three and five eighths. Now that's a really good tip when you're cutting paper in the, in the inside of paper where you're not cutting the whole way through. If you just mark it with some tape um, or I actually just came up with using this painter's tape because it was on my desk amongst a bunch of other stuff. And it was really great because I thought, oh, I'm just gonna start at the top of this one and go to the top of this one. And then if I was going to make a bunch of cards, I'm not even having to really measure and be careful. I'm just knowing that I'm gonna go from that mark to the top of this mark here. So that was a really easy way for me to do that. So we'll get the trimmer out of the way. So there we go. We have this little slip mark that is going to be where we're going to be sliding in the panel that has our buddy button on, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just going to fold all of these scored lines here. We're just gonna get them nice and nimble here so that we can get to where we know how our pedestal is gonna go. So our pedestal is gonna look like this. You'll have two squares that are one and a quarter inches all around squares there. So what you're gonna do is put your paper back down. You're going to make sure that this part here is nice and where is my bone folder? Well, of course I can't find it. Now you would probably say, Cindy, why don't you have that there? Because you're always looking for that bone folder. So this is going to be folded down here and folded up one section, okay? And then we're going to take our two and three quarters. Now this is the piece that's going to be sliding up through this hole. So I put some tear and tape here because you want it to be nice and secure, uh, a real strong hold because people are gonna be playing with it. And if you use your snail, it might not hold as strong. So if you use glue or tear and tape, it'll be great. Or if you still have your fast fuse around, you can do that. So we're just gonna pull that out there. We're gonna just take our protective adhesive off there and we have this folded up here and we are just going to adhere this now one flap up so we have one flap up and we are going to adhere it halfway so if you think about it this way it's just three blocks if you're using your grid paper you're going in three quarters of an inch on each side and then you've got that adhered right there, okay? And since we, are, since we have that adhered, let's just go ahead and work on this piece here, okay? I've got a little glare there. I think this paper was in the sun. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to put a piece of Grapefruit Grove on here. Now you'll notice that we don't have to go the whole way to the bottom because it's going to be covered at the bottom of the card when it pops up. So you don't have to worry about that. And the reason why I have it at five inches instead of five and a quarter, whenever my piece of paper is five and a half by two and three quarters, I went to two and a half. And normally you'd say five and a quarter to go in. But I wanna show you a trick. If you're using a piece of six inch paper, now I don't have my gingham here. I'll just pull this one out here, okay? So if you're cutting on a six inch piece of paper, if you cut over five inches and you cut off, I'll just go ahead and do it here. If you go over and cut off an inch, okay? You're just taking one of your pieces of gingham. This way you'll get two cards out of one six by six. You're just going to put it at five and a half on the left side and you're gonna cut an inch off. So here, you're going to cut this back down to four. You can just cut that there. And that's gonna become that piece right there. And then if you take this piece, now we're six inches by five because we cut one inch off and now this is five and half of that's two and a half. But we wanna cut off this bottom inch here so that we have another one inch that we can put on the bottom of the trophy. Okay, so now we've cut off another piece and then we can trim that down to four. Now we have two pieces and now we're at a five by five square. And so then we'll just go over to two and a half and we can cut that down and now you have two two and a halves. So from one six by six of that gingham, you can get two different cards because now you have the trophy part that pops up and you have the piece that's going to go there. So just think about it before you cut into your paper. Always 
measure twice, cut once, right? As my dad used to say. So there you go, an easy way to make sure you're making the best use of your paper. So I've got this extra one by four that's gonna go on the bottom here. And then I just put this piece, we're going to put on to this panel that's gonna be the part that pops up out of the trophy. So let's just go ahead and adhere that. You can choose to use the Ah, you know what, you can use the smaller gingham or the larger gingham. Since I used the small gingham, let's use the large gingham on this one. So we'll just put some, open up our snail, put some snail on our gingham paper. So happy that gingham paper's back. Oh, such beautiful, bright colors. You know, we still have the, um, the buffalo plaid stamp set that carried over too, which is awesome because if you don't have gingham in a certain color, you can make gingham with that buffalo plaid. It looks really awesome. So there we go, we have our gingham on there. So then the next thing I did is I stamped a little bunny. Isn't he cute? You could do the bunny, you could do the goose or the duck, whichever you wanna call that, probably a duck, right? Um, depending on what color you wanna make them. And you've got the cute little squirrel and the little ducklings. So I just cut one of the rectangles that fit really nicely on there. And that was the rectangle that's about three and a quarter by one and three quarters when you're looking at your, your rectangles. So here, let's look at what we how we colored him. I found that if you still have your stamp and blend abilities, the light Calypso coral, the light Calypso coral matches perfectly um, the grapefruit grove. So I just kind of painted in his cute little sweatery coat. We'll just get that all colored in there. Yeah, I was just playing around and since we didn't have a grapefruit grove marker, and I wanted to use that gingham. I could have picked yellow or any of the pretty colors in the gingham pack. They all coordinate really nicely. But I just went ahead and um, pulled this out by accident because I had it with my other blends and I noticed it really matched beautifully. Look, what a nice perfect match that is. And there we go. And that, like I said, is the um, retired light Calypso Coral from the Stampin' Blend Abilities when they were out. So there we go. And then I used light crumb cake. And what I did for this bunny is I colored the bunny. Let's do his, let's do his little ears first. And I just used the light flirty flamingo. And I'm going to use my brush side. And then make sure you're always clicking your blends back and hearing them click. We're going to do the inside of his ears here that way we can color now around it. And I just used the light and I just did a nice color over on the bunny around his face. And his little paws. Oh, I just remember reading all of the Beatrix Potter kids, books to my kids. And then I just recently unpacked a bunch of books and in our family room, I put all these big, like the treasury of Beatrix Potter and how things work and all those books from when the kids were little. And my husband said, why are you doing that? And I'm like, because I just love those books. And so I'm gonna do his little belly crumb cake as well, but look how I'm gonna end up making the belly look different. So I am just getting his belly colored in. And then what I'm gonna do is go over the sides here. And then I'm just gonna make his actual body darker by just going over with the blends a second and third time and then his belly looks lighter and it looks like I'm an artist ha huh? I went a little dark I think on that so then just come back over here and get his ears a little bit darker by blending see I am definitely not one of those awesome watercolors but it is awesome that I can use blends and really feel like an artist and then 
well, I wouldn't say an artist, but it makes me feel like I can do something really pretty there. And so you can see his little belly just has a little bit of shadow of being a little bit lighter there. And if you want, you can always go in with your, you can go in with your Stampin' Blends that's the color lifter, and you can actually lift a little color from his belly since I did do it a little bit. And see how it's lifting the color, and giving it more depth there. So his belly looks a little bit of a different color there. A lot of people, when I put it on the table at class, they think it's a white marker, but it's not. So here we go. We're going to do this part here. We're gonna put this together so that we know where we're at here. So now we're gonna put the stitched rectangle with our colored bunny on there. And we're just gonna make, make it so at the top and the right and left hand side all have about an equal border on it. And we'll put the little bunny there. Okay, and then we are, oh, also notice that I used this, these little sprigs here. And I just um, inked them up in pear pizzazz and I just stamped them around the foot of the bunny, bunny before I cut it out. And then it just looks like grass is around there. And so then what I wanted to do is have a nice sentiment at the top. And so I just stamped using memento black because you always use memento black when you're using your stamp and blends. And I stamped it on a piece of scratch paper that I had whisper white and I used my one and a quarter inch. And then I just made sure that it was straight and my punch, punch that out. And then I use the retired one and three eighths inch circle punch. If you don't have that, you could use your layering circles. There is that size, but it was just easier enough, easy enough for me to just punch out a pair of pizzazz uh, circle there and not get out my layering circles. But you will notice the layering circles have a longer durability to them and a longer staying power than our punches because some of my older punches that have been used a lot are starting to get a little frayed. So then I just put that up at the top of our card. And that just gives a little more dimension and something at the top of the card that's not gonna go popping in. Oh, we can't do that yet. Okay, what do we have to do? This has to go through the slit here. Okay, so that goes through the slit, see? All I did was, remember I adhered it on the bottom of that bottom flap, and now I'm gonna pop it into that slit we made. Okay, there we go. And so then you are going to put some adhesive right on, you could either put them down here or up here. I would suggest putting them down here because then you'll know exactly where you're putting it. Okay, now I have seen uh, other demonstrators and card makers that share their cards that they have put a whole strip two strips of the tear and tape along the whole bottom here. The only thing is, is this doesn't have very much wiggle room. If you put it the whole way across when it comes down, it's gonna, it could get, in my opinion, could get a little jam there. So we're just going to take off those protective things. Now remember here, you can see you've got, this is what we did. We made all our one and a quarter inch score lines. Then we cut it at the five inch mark. We cut in five eighths from each side and then we just folded it around. And then we had our card like this and then we put adhesive and we put our pop out glued to the bottom of this first flap that's folded in and then we pushed it through that hole there. And then we're going to just fold down so that we see one, two, three sections. And then that'll line up with the bottom there there you go. You've got your trophy card that pops down and stands up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to push the trophy card back together because I'm going to show you how we're going to decorate here. So this is the portion that we're going to decorate now, the second section here. And that's where we're going to put the Glad We Are Friends. And that's where we're going to use our one by four inch piece of the matching gingham. And this time we're using the larger side of the gingham and we're just going to pop that right there so that we have a 1 8 inch border all around okay then I wanted something to bring because now we can put this Easter greeting back up there <laughs> that has glue on it so we can pop that right there 
And like I said, you can see when it pops back into the trophy card, it won't, it doesn't get, just keep it up above where when you're mailing the card, it fits in like that. So now what we're gonna do is, okay, we're gonna put it back down again. I'm playing with it. See, even, even the demonstrator wants to play with it. Okay, so then I wanted something here and I used the frame. I did the Glad We're Friends and I used the framelits from the petals and more thinlet dies to cut that out. And then I wanted to put it onto this also, this lattice that is with that thing. But yet the green was just poking through just in the wrong places. So what I did is I thought, well, I can still make this work. So I put some adhesive on the back at the ends of the sentiment. And then I just took and I cut off this right here. I just cut off this section right here. And then I was able to just go over and adhere it there. And then I took the other side as well. And I just took off that first kind of like bump circle, the first like uh, little part, okay? And then I just did the same thing on this side. I just covered up. And that way I had something that, something that brought the green down from the top to the bottom and then made this not so plain here. And then I went ahead and put dimensionals. I knew I have a little pack here of those ones that are just itching to be used there. And then I just stuck that across there and then we can put that on that bottom part of the trophy card to tie everything together and we can just get it about equal on the top bottom and the sides okay let's get this there we go so we've got that sentiment there we're getting to the end there. And so I thought, oh, we need some something pretty to like decorate this part, the part that sits up on the card. So I just took some of this polka dot tool and I just cut about a 20 inches, it seems to be the good one. And I just ran it through the box that's formed there. And it's not gonna be imp impeding anything because it's actually on this part of the card. So when the card closes, it doesn't touch it really at all. And because it's such a, a thin, ribbon it's just perfect to go there and like I said polka dots and gingham ah does it get any better so then we'll just take and tie a little bow here okay I don't have to be a perfectionist here because if you could see me sometimes the amount of time it takes me to tie a bow okay so let's just get that little bow equal there okay and I'm just gonna let it fly there for a second okay Ta -da! that was for you Sandy okay so there we go we've got a cute little look at that bun bun he looks so cute bun bun is the name of my neighbor's bunny and oh it was a big bunny too oh gosh bun bun was so cute so there we've got our card and you're saying to yourself that's a beautiful card i can see somebody displaying that sitting it on their sink while they were doing the dishes sitting it out at easter time but then you're thinking but where are you going to write a message well we're going to put it on the back here and what i did there is i just took and i didn't do it on this one but just take a uh, two and a half by four inch or just measure down i'd say about I'd say about four inches, maybe um, maybe a little less than four inches because it really won't matter here. But also, if you're using a light color, if you're using a springy color like yellow or grapefruit grove, you could actually write on here. But when I am going to do this for um, a class for some ladies, I'm going to just put the white on the back of here. And then you have your little message and you have your little trophy card. And then whenever you go to close it, you just pull it up there. And it's so easy to go into an A2 size card 
and then you just pop that air and whenever the person gets it hopefully they'll go oh what's this and they'll push it and they'll see that they've got a cute little trophy card i like both of the ginghams the larger gingham and the smaller gingham so just to review we're going to start off with a four and a quarter by ten score it at four one okay four and a quarter by ten score it every one and a quarter inches so that would be one and a quarter, two and a half, three and three quarters, five, six and one quarter, seven and a half, eight and three quarters. And at the five inch mark, you're just gonna stick it into your stamp and trimmer at five eighths and you're gonna cut down to three and five eighths. And then that's gonna give you the opening for you to put your, your slider mechanism in and then it attaches to this bottom flap and then you just fold it down you fold in the top flap, fold it down, and then that creates your trophy card with your part that pops up. So remember, you can go to my blog, cindyleebdesigns.com, and you can see all the materials and the measurements for the cut pieces for the card. And then you can um, ask me any questions. You can leave a comment. Um, make sure you subscribe. If to my YouTube channel. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, okay? Um, it's so nice to meet with you and thanks for buzzing by friends.